At New Lynn Fish Company, even at dawn, some truths are universally acknowledged. This is your business. It's fish. I'm guessing you're going to vote out. Yes. Here they know that Londoners pay more for fish. What is that? That Europeans eat more fish than we do. I've got a place for everything. And everything must be in its place. And that Britain would be better off out of the EU. The Spanish, the French seem to be able to do what they want with the fish. And we're not allowed to. So it's just time we came out. It used to be a far bigger interest than it is now. And it could still be uh, bigger if we had more quota. And it employed more people. And be good for places like this. I started on Newland Fish Market in 1972. So 44 years in the job. With the catch loaded in the van, Newsnight hitched a ride with Newlyn Fish Company's door-to-door -door salesman, Tony. This is uh, the, the luxury of the job. We get to see some beautiful views every single day. Well, I'll be voting to come out. The, the farming has gone downhill, the fishing's gone downhill, there's no more mining. But for some of Tony's customers, the referendum is less cut and dry. I would like some cod, please. Yes, yeah, certainly. This loyal customer buys Tony's fish, but not his arguments. I'm going to vote to stay in because it's, you don't know who to believe anyway. And um, it's a worry knowing what it's going to do to the economy for our children. Um, if we leave? Yes. Yes, I think it'll be a period of incredible um, flux. Right, you sure, please. The usual. See, I, I call on about 150 customers today. And, and, and uh, most of them all say, can I have the usual, please? And luckily, I know what the usual is. <laughs> In general, I think we ought to get out of it. So you'll wait that way? Yeah, definitely. Tony will be happy. So I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brenda's on my no, side. There's real poverty in Cornwall. Because the county's GDP is well below the EU average, European money's poured in, funding infrastructure projects, airports, university departments, superfast broadband. Between 2000 and 2014, the EU invested almost £900 million in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. Another £480 million or so is allocated up to 2020. But it doesn't always buy appreciation. Look, see, little and large. <laughs> and I'll have you know, I'm the tallest in my family. I don't think I've ever met someone as tall as you. I'm quite excited. I've got a nephew in Canada, seven foot one. Really? Mm. And what are you, six foot? I'm only six foot eight. Oh, you're tiny. Yes. Yeah. My initial reaction was get out, because... Um, even though Cornwall's had all this money? Or even though Cornwall's had this money, because I'm thinking nationally across the country, is it actually worth our while staying in? And I'm still not certain, because again, it's this thing of there are too many questions, and it's this deep in the dark. It was time to bid farewell to Tony. Round the corner from his fish round, but unlikely to be regulars, is Penzance's Trenere estate, designated the most deprived area in Cornwall poorer than parts of Poland, Hungary and Lithuania. The, rice is nearly ready. the charity working out of the local community centre has had a little money from the EU's European Social Fund. This is our signature Sri Lankan hot pot. <laughs> Every Thursday, they offer a free lunch to those in need. Welcome to you, sir. Would you like some lunch? I love Sri Lanka, actually. And they invited me to join them. Since Brian Collett left the Navy, life's been tough. And where are you living at the moment? Have you got someone to live? No, no. no. Well, I've got a tent. Right. It's a two-man tent. So you're sleeping in a tent somewhere yes. around Penzance? Yeah. In a way, I suppose a tent is better than a doorway, yeah. Living around down here especially is just a dead end. And as you said, they've pumped a lot of money into Cornwall. And I've not, I've not even heard of no money being put into Cornwall. I don't know where the money from the EU has gone, but it certainly hasn't come here. It's not a leap for you to then say, well, I'm going to vote to leave. You, you... I don't want to leave the no. EU. I think this country would be screwed if we leave the EU. Why? We've got no industry anymore. We seem to be doing better with being in the EU than without it. I know loads of farmers now that would be absolutely screwed without their EU funding. No. Anyone, Anyone want to leave? Do you want to leave? Getting out of the EU? Well, no, I've only just got here. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to vote? Do you think you'll actually vote? See, that's the thing, I don't know. Because without having an address, yeah. no, you don't get anything come through. 
the post. And if I was able to vote, I would vote to stay in because it's it is it's a really really romantic idea that we go back. Mm. But I, you know where you press button. Remainers will take comfort from those sentiments. Despite Cornwall receiving more money from the EU for each of its half a million inhabitants than anywhere in England, there's been a lot of talk that it's veering Eurosceptic ahead of the referendum. Carly's Organics is one of more than 25,000 Cornish businesses to have got EU help. Lemons from Sicily. We buy hemp seeds from hemp seed oil from Romania. This pan-European enterprise received £300,000 from the EU's Regional Development Fund to build a new factory and help boost the local economy. It's enabled the business to grow in terms of sales, which in turn has meant that we can employ more people. We now employ nine, whereas we had three before in Truro. So it's a significant upturn in the number of, number of hours worked, which has got to be a good thing for, for Cornwall. Newsnight's arrival coincided with the processing of some very un-European Brazil nuts all the way from Bolivia. And then the vending machine. Even here in a place that's benefited from EU support, attitudes as well as ingredients are mixed. I think it's slightly churlish to have had this, this um, great funding from the RDF and then say thank you very much, we're off now. Um, a bit ungrateful. Well, it, it would come across like that, I would feel like that. But it's more than that, really. I mean, I'm by inclination not a, a lever of things, all sorts of things, which may or may not be a good thing, I don't know. But I think so much of our security depends on joining together. The funding, I mean, it's obviously been incredibly beneficial for us as a company. Um, you know, we, we're so glad to have been able to take the business to where it is because of it, um, a lot of hard work as well. But it doesn't um, necessarily but it hasn't. vote yes. It not doesn't necessarily, no, not necessarily, um, no, still undecided on that. In my heart of hearts, um, leaving would be a good option as far as being nostalgic and thinking about Britain being great and thinking about the great industries that we once had in our country um, and bringing back some independence into the country. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I think that the fact that this factory has been lucky enough to be given European funding is great. Um, it's been able to, you know, we've employed more people um, and hopefully we're driving more money through, you know, through Cornwall and then up through, through the country. Um, but that doesn't make you think, I'm definitely going to vote to stay. No. Not at all. Perhaps the last word should be in Cornish. As Cornish speakers gathered for a weekend of immersion in a language officially recognised as a minority tongue by the Council of Europe in 2002. Um, I wondered if any of you knew if there was a word in Cornish for Brexit. <laughs> Dibeth is leave. And what about Remain? Um, Gortos. Gortos. They sang us out, Celts first and Europhiles in the main. Many here fear a Brexit will have an adverse impact on the land they love. But some of their Cornish neighbours may not be in tune with that sentiment.